Rock Defense here. Today we're going to talk about um, drawing from the holster. This is going to be a two-part video because this topic is pretty in-depth. We're going to draw on some expertise from some uh, guys that know a lot more about this than me. A couple of guys who have since passed on. Um, so these uh, two men we're going to talk about, Bill Jordan, and Rex Applegate were very actively involved in personal defense and, and combat training uh, in their day and they have some pretty good things to say. These are the books that uh, we're referencing in the videos we're making on handgun draw and uh, both revolver draw and, uh, and the semi-automatic pistol draw. These authors, some of them have passed on, some of them are still with us, but uh, they present some very good information and we uh, highly suggest that you get these books and you read them, uh, especially No Second Place Winner by Bill Jordan, Kill or Get Killed by Rex Applegate. Now these are a little old school by today's standards, but they've got some valuable things to teach and uh, we think they're well worth reading so we recommend them to you and as we mentioned them in the video I just wanted you to get a good idea of uh, what they look like. You can still get them. Some of them are still being published. In fact most of these are all still published. If you can't find Kill or Get Killed currently being published then you can certainly find it on the used book market. In fact that's where that book came from was uh, from the used book I just ordered it online. So, anyway, we recommend them highly. And uh, the one on the on the left in the gravest extreme, Masad Iob, uh, very good. And no second place winner, Bill Jordan, Kill or Get Killed by Rex Applegate, and Principles of Personal Defense by Jeff Cooper. All very good books, and we recommend them. Let's, uh, let's talk about this first part, drawing from the holster, and we'll draw on the wisdom of these, uh, these two experts. And again, we mentioned that these two guys lived uh, and worked um, as uh, military officers. Both served in World War II. Uh, both were involved in law enforcement and training, and so they've got a lot of experience in this, uh, and so we'll draw on that. Bill Jordan, in his book, uh, No Second Place Winner, he said, until you can draw and get hits in time shading one half second, you should not presume that you have mastered uh, the handgun. Now, a half a second, we're talking about drawing and shooting in half a second. And uh, he talked about using open top holsters like this one. And, of course, uh, revolvers very similar to this one in, in his day. He was a Border Patrol agent, by the way. Said any man with normal reflexes, this is what Bill Jordan said, any man with normal reflexes in coordination can master fast draw double action shooting. He always taught that when you draw a revolver you always use it in double action. You do not have time to shoot in single action and so that means you're going to pull the trigger, it's going to pull a hammer back, rotate the cylinder and fire the gun. That is the proper way to, to fire a revolver. Their message is relevant today because a lot of people still carry revolvers. I carry a revolver for uh, personal defense, for concealed carry, so this is important to me. Okay. So anyway, Bill Jordan, I think um, his, his uh, teachings were, were, were right on the mark and I like what, what he said. He went on to say the statistics show that a phrase, his words, between officers and criminals usually occur under conditions of surprise short range and poor light conditions which make deliberate aimed fire not only inadvisable but impossible. It is the unexpected situation that packs the most danger and that's for a police officer or for you or for me as a concealed carry permit holder. And, um, and so some of the things that he talked about uh, were that you, you have to draw quickly, you have to get on target quickly. Now back in those days they also taught that, I'm going to demonstrate now, they also taught that when you drew the gun out, if you were within seven yards of a bad guy, you just used this position. Okay, you did not come up to the aim fire position within seven yards. You wanted to go fast, 
and be quick. Within seven yards, they figured you could hit the target in this kind of a position. If you indexed with your hand and your body, you use good body indexing, you could get the job done. And of course, down on the border, when Bill Jordan was a, was a border patrolman, I'm sure that came into play. So you had to be quick and you had to be on target. Now I'm nowhere as quick as Bill Jordan, um, so don't, you know, don't use me as an example, but that's the kind of style I used. Now Rex Applegate, uh, Rex Applegate uh, said that when a man is faced by an assailant who has a gun in his hand and murder in his heart, he must be able to use his firearm instantly and effectively. Only a superior speed and accuracy will enable him to come out of most combat situations alive. Out of most combat situations alive. So speed and accuracy, and even at that, it's only going to be most of them. Now, and he had, and he had experience. He knew. He used to teach people. Rex Applegate used to teach um, CIA agents and that how to kill people. So uh, Rex Applegate knew knew how to. Well, he knew how to take care of people, the bad guys, bad guys, okay? Okay, he said, it, it was proved that a man trained only in the target phase of the handgun was proficient up to that point where he could kill an enemy only when he had to aim and fire. So Rex Applegate is saying, a man trained for target shooting can shoot somebody if they're shooting target style, but you don't always have that luxury in a in a combat situation, so he went on to say um, that you the mechanics involved in getting a handgun into action in the fastest possible time are simple, the fewest and shortest movements to be used, and that the hand once in motion continue in motion without pause until the weapon is uh, aligned on the target and the shot is fired. And both he and Bill Jordan preached the same thing. That means that. To attain efficiency, you relax, you let your shoulder drop back a little bit, you draw with arm motion only, not with your body, you use a circular motion, so there's no wasted movement here. Circular motion down, up, shoot. That's what they taught. Use the circular motion, let the shoulder drop, get into the circular motion, uh, no body movements, and don't do anything more than you have to. It's efficiency of movement here. They also went on to say that, uh, which I thought was a, a very good point, that uh, speed is fine, but accuracy is final. So if you are the first one to shoot on target, you're usually going to win. So speed is fine but accuracy is final. Always remember that it's the first shot on target that counts. Not necessarily who fires the first shot but uh, the, the one who gets on target first and hits something important. Okay. The body should remain motionless uh, for most of the draw uh, and one reason that this is also helps because if you remain motionless you're not telegraphing your moves to the bad guy. You know. Uh, you're not saying, you know, getting into the combat crouch, I'm getting ready to draw my gun now so you can shoot too. You're simply standing in this position and then coming out and firing. You're not telegraphing what it is that uh, you're not disclosing your intentions. Okay. You also have to practice this because you have to be able to do this as your hand comes up under this, this uh, grip. You have to be able to do it, so you need to practice, practice, so you can do it in your sleep. You need to be able to get the, uh, this, the body uh, motion there and practice it. So, um, it, it is important, I think, that in a gun battle, we remember that the utmost speed, confidence, and ability to use the handgun from any position, usually without the aid of sights, are paramount. Because if you're in a concealed carry situation, you're going to be involved in shooting between 3, 7, and 10 yards. And you're, you're not going to have a lot of time to come out of the holster and get a good aim shot. Again, you're going to have to be quick or quick or something like this. If you're pushing somebody out of the way, you're going to have to practice that. And, uh, and when we teach concealed carry, we teach people to shoot with one hand at close range 
um, because we think that's important. Well, that kind of concludes the first portion of this in revolvers. This is a very brief overview. We appreciate you tuning in and watching us. We're going to do part two on semi-automatics. So until then, we'll say see you later.